Hi, and welcome to uh, the KU Law video chat uh, about career services. I'm joined today by two of my colleagues. Um, they both have a, a wealth of experience as attorneys or, and uh, as uh, career services professionals. I will let them introduce them. I'm Stephen Friedman. I'm the Assistant Dean of Admissions, and I'll let uh, my two colleagues introduce themselves. Hi, this is Heather Spielmaker. I'm the Assistant Dean for Career Services. Um, I have about oh, 13 years of experience in law school administration. Um, I did practice law for, for a bit in the middle there, but found that I really enjoyed working with law students and I'm really glad to be back in that role. Um, I'm gonna give Stacy a minute to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Stacy Blakeman. I'm the Director of Career Services. I graduated from KU Law in 2009, and I practiced immigration law in Lawrence for 10 years before um, moving into this position back in August. Great, um, thank you so much. Uh, just a, a quick note, we are going to be recording this video, or we are recording it, uh, and we will be posting it later, uh, so please uh, note that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll ask some questions um, to, to Heather and Stacy, um, but feel free to pitch in at any time with your questions. Uh, we're happy to answer them. Um, so first question, um, before we go into any detail, um, can you talk about the philosophy of the Career Services Office at KU Law and um, what, what your goals are? Yeah, um, so first and foremost, we really focus on interpersonal relationships so that we can get to know students and help them find a career that is a good fit for them. Um, we do not have any sort of underlying agenda as far as like, we want students to do X career or Y career. Really, it is a matter of what the student wants and what is a good fit for them. And so um, we focus on professional development and on career development and they overlap. And so we wanna make sure that throughout all of that though, we have a working relationship with the students so that um, at the end of law school, they're able to move into a career that is satisfying for them. Great, um, before we get into the details, uh, can we start with the, the most recent headlines? Um, what does the graduating class for this year look like? Do we have some numbers from last year that um, we like to brag about? <laughs> I'll take that one. Um, so I'm really excited about the employment trends for KU Law. Uh, with the class of 2017, we had about 76% of our graduating class um, that found full-time, long-term work that either required a bar passage, so practicing attorney work, or that gave strong preference to someone who had a JD degree. Um, by the class of 2018, that rose pretty, pretty heftily. Um, we were at 81% for that employment rate. And then this year's statistic, while it's not public yet, um, also shows a very healthy increase again. Um, so I'm really excited about the upward trajectory of um, our employment market and just everything seems to be rolling on really well. Great, um, well those sound like really uh, uh, good results for our students. Can you discuss some of the programs uh, that KU Law offers or the, I'm sorry, the Career Services Office offers to our students? Yeah, so again, we look at professional development and career development. And first, we want students to have a basic foundation. We don't assume anybody has any sort of background in the law. Maybe your mom is a judge, or maybe you've never met a single lawyer before in your life. It doesn't really matter because we're going to create an even playing field as far as um, some of those basics go. We're going to teach you how to make a legal resume. We're going to teach you how to do cover letters, how to network in a group of attorneys. Um, we have a lot of programming that is geared towards that sort of foundational development. Um, and then we also have, um, we like to take students out to experience different opportunities. We um, take students to different parts of Kansas to explore the legal market there. We take them to Wichita and Dodge City. We take students to um, Washington DC for Equal Justice Works project. And we also do traveling, we call them traveling on-campus interviews where we go to places like Denver 
the summer we're going to Tampa um, to ex basically expand our market in terms of making it easy for students to interview and find jobs in these different locations. Um, and then we also within Green Hall have a lot of different opportunities where practitioners come in to the building, talk to students, um, talk about their career path, talk about what opportunities there might be, do interviewing for students um, within the walls of Green Hall as well. You know, I, I think that's really important, something Stacy said. Uh, when I first started at KU Law, I was really blown away by the fact that um, the law school actually supports students and pays for travel to some of these other markets. For instance, the Equal Justice Works program in DC, the Tampa program she mentioned, um, the Denver program she mentioned, going down to Dodge City. I've never um, heard of a law school that supports student travel to get our students out into the broader national market in the way that KU does. Great. Uh, speaking about geography, um, can you talk about where most of our students find uh, employment after graduation? Sure, I can take that one. Um, anywhere from 60 to 70 percent of our graduating class tends to stay in the Kansas or Missouri market. Um, with the rest of them, it, uh, it varies by each class. Each class has different areas, where, which would be like the next most popular destination. Some years it's Colorado, some years it's Washington, D.C., um, sometimes it's Texas. So, um, you know, we have a majority staying in Kansas and Missouri, but a pretty hefty, um, you know, sub minority of that, anywhere from 30 to 40 percent going anywhere across the nation. And each year we usually have about one person who ends up doing something international as well. Great. Uh, what kinds of jobs do KU Law graduates get? Do they tend to be in one industry or field or, or are they spread out? Um, I, can, I can speak to that as well. Um, each year, about 40% of our students will um, take work in a firm, so a private practice um, destination. Then each year, about 10% will go into business or industry, maybe working in general counsel or compliance for a, a business or a, a large corporation. We usually have about 15% to go to work for government agencies, either um, state, local, or national. Um, as well, we have an increasing number of students who are going into postgraduate judicial clerkships. Those can be a really prestigious resume builder. Um, this coming year, uh, the class of 2019 looks like we'll be at about 12% of our students taking um, federal or state clerkships. And then we always have um, a, a good portion of students that are going into public interest work. So for instance, maybe working for a public defender or at a legal aid office, um, that's usually around you know, anywhere from five to 10%. Um, a lot of students uh, wonder about uh, summer jobs. Um, are those, do KU law students do summer work? Are those jobs available? Um, what kinds of jobs and what is the career services? Does KU law help students find those opportunities? Yeah, it's really, really common at KU Law for um, first year students to pursue some sort of practical experience after their first year. Um, and we have quite a few things in place to sort of facilitate finding an opportunity for the summer. We have um, spring on campus interviews, which encompass all classes, but the primary target are one else. And so we have employers that come to campus and actively recruit for summer positions. Um, we have an online jobs board, it's called Simplicity, and we have employers also advertise positions there. Um, and it is, you know, it's a, an institutional job board, so it's not like you could access it if you are, you know, just Googling it, for example. Um, and it encompasses, again, just a breadth of practice areas. So some private firms, some government positions, some public interest. I mean, it's pretty, pretty broad in terms of the different opportunities students pursue. And KU also has some programming that is, um, they've kind of partnered with some other organizations. So we have the Medical Legal Partnership, which partners with 
I'm KU Med and Lawrence Memorial Hospital, where we send students out to do externship opportunities there. Um, we have, um, yeah, we have these clinical opportunities as well, which, um, you know, depending on what the student wants, for example, if they want to do a summer with a judge, we have judicial field placement, which is a pretty incredible program. Um, it's, it, it is overseen by Professor Pam Keller, and she um, has built really close relationships with judges all over the region. And so she's able to really um, thoughtfully place students with a particular judge for the summer. So we have a lot of different opportunities. But of course and we have classes too. <laughs> Um, and, and to add to what Stacy has said, um, another thing that I find very generous about the programming at KU Law is the summer stipend program that we have in place. So if a student were to take a paid or unpaid summer position and still have maybe some, um, you know, some financial concerns as far as making ends meet over the course of the summer, there is a very generous stipend program in place at the law school to help cover those financial costs of, of doing a summer uh, opportunity, whether it be you know, an unpaid internship maybe with a judge or at a legal aid office, or um, in some cases, even if it's paid, but not quite enough to, to make the ends meet. And we also have a lot of programming to support the students who are getting ready for those interview um, programs that Stacy mentioned. We have speed mock interviewing, so students get lots of feedback all in one night. Um, right before those interviews start so that they can really improve their interviewing skills and a lot of other programming in place to support students so they can put their best foot forward. Um, bringing up to date to uh, current events, uh, we all know that uh, there's uh, quite a situation going on with COVID-19. Um, how do you see this affecting um, our graduates now? And do you think there will be effects as long as three years from now when the class of 2023 graduates? Um, I'll, I'll take that one. So for right now, we have not heard of any employers rescinding offers for postgraduate employment. Everything seems to be, um, you know, going along as planned for right now. Obviously, you know, that's a great question and it's kind of anyone's guess how long this will last. Um, as far as the class of 2023 and now, we're definitely seeing um, you know, that the value of being in employment and labor law uh, specialist right now is very valuable. <laughs> it's definitely skyrocketed, as well as um, attorneys who have a background in um, healthcare law. Now, whether or not those immediate demands you know, will continue to set the market in the future and be areas of high demand three years from now, I don't know. Um, but I do know that if I were still practicing right now, I would, um, you know, I would definitely want to be a lawyer with a background in employment and labor law or healthcare law based on what we're seeing the demand for right now. Great. Uh, we have a question from Madison uh, Gerhardt. Uh, great question. Are there any particular opportunities available with healthcare law? I know we have some big um, healthcare law employers in the region. Uh, and uh, so if you had uh, any thoughts on, on healthcare law, uh, both regionally and then, then in general for KU law graduates? Yeah, so I briefly mentioned the Medical Legal Partnership, and that places students, first of all, it's an opportunity that you can do during the summer or during the school year, and it places students at a hospital, and you have an opportunity to work with clients there in sort of, um, whatever they need and so like we've had some students do immigration we've had some students do like more transactional work document review that type of thing um as far as like you know some of the um private firms that do health care there are many in, in the kansas city area i mean it's one of our biggest markets that have huge health care law um departments and we have quite a few students who have articulated an interest in that area. And it's, um, you know, it kind of makes you a unique candidate when you're able to articulate an interest in something like that. And then you're able to interview with a firm that has that, you know, field 
that they practice in and you can speak about your you know, personal experience or whatever knowledge you already have about that and why you're interested in it. And so we've had students placed in those firms as well. Additionally, I would add that um, on a national basis, uh, there are most of the hospitals throughout the country will have some kind of a summer legal intern in their general counsel or compliance offices. Um, I think that coming from a law school with the reputation and the ranking that KU Law has puts our students in an excellent position to be competitive for those positions throughout the country. And our office is familiar with working with students and trying to obtain those. And, you know, would definitely look forward to working with Madison and any of her classmates on finding just the right opportunity. Um, great. Uh, we have a, a, another question here from Kyler Womack. Um, how often uh, can students uh, meet with the career services uh, for, with you guys? Um, is it, uh, is, is there a, uh, difficult to find application process? Do you have to go through committee to get the right to speak to you guys? Or is it a little more <laughs> uh, straightforward and simpler than that? There's a lot of velvet rope, take that. <laughs> a lot of velvet rope uh, between us and the students. Um, <laughs> just kidding. We have an open door policy. And so it's, like I said, interpersonal relationships are really important to us and we you cannot build those if you are not spending time with the students and so we have an open door policy we love meeting with students um it is like most of our day i think is spent sort of fielding questions and having previously scheduled meetings and pop-in meetings and quick questions and you know that sort of thing but we love meeting with students that's why we're here um, we are as accessible as possible we have so students no. who come in almost daily we have students who bring us their plants for care <laughs> um, and then we have students who you know come in on a more formal basis like maybe two times per semester and schedule their appointments out so you know we're here as much as you need us mm -hmm. Yeah, we really don't want there to be a barrier to entry. We want our office to be a comfortable place. And so we have great snacks too. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They have a jar filled with uh, candies and everything. I, I, I come by frequently myself. <laughs> Fig bars, fruit snacks, granola. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't look past the M&Ms. So. Oh. <laughs> Well, this has been a, a great discussion. Um, we really appreciate your time. We appreciate uh, the folks who have, uh, have viewed along with us. Um, I know uh, Heather and Stacy are very uh, uh, happy to receive your emails. Um, you can find their email addresses uh, right on the website or you can contact me and I can forward your question to them. Um, so thank you, Heather. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we will post this on the Admitted Students Portal soon. And everyone have a great weekend, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks so much. Nice talking with everyone.